for he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
our Lord 2020 behind us. We have all had some battles, unforeseen circumstances that have added much discomfort to our days. We have dealt with unemployment, uncertainty, pandemic, quarantine, the reduction or loss of wages, marital strain, disobedient children, health crisis, pain, heartache, and heartbreak. We have had to learn to cope in the absence of church fellowship. We've adjusted to a new normal. This, things have been in total upheaval for quite a while. We walked into the year confident that everything would be well. 2020 vision, prosperity, hope, a brand new beginning have instead been seemingly replaced with devastating blow after blow. So, what is going on? I've asked many times in this new year, shucks, I even asked this morning several times, what is going on? I had big dreams, great hope. This was the year to start a new business. For somebody, this is the year to start a new family. For someone, this was the year of a big promotion. This was the year to make a full term in your pregnancy. This was the year to get married. This was the year to buy a house. 2020 was the year to start a new career. This was the year to wild out as a senior in high school. To grow and develop as a college freshman. This was the year to travel, to retire, to live. And many plans, and many of the plans that we made have been born. This is where we meet the children of Israel. Seemingly the hardest part is over. They have endured much, come from normalcy to pop to royalty to slavery. It had been 430 years since they had come to Egypt, and now the card has finally changed in their favor. We've all been there, crying out to God about one thing or another, needing a new job, needing a reliable car, needing more <laughs> money, wanting to be married, desiring children, Praying, praying for the health of a loved one, asking God to heal your own body, trying desperately to hold on to hope in the midst of a desperate situation. In addition to seeing unchanged, dysfunction in a family that seems unsolvable, and habits that seem unbreakable, wayward children that won't be corrected, ailing parents that won't follow the doctor's orders, so many things we have had to deal with. We petitioned God for expecting a change to come because this is the year. We turned the corner and we jumped out the pot straight into the fire. This is where we are in this Exodus story. In this story, the children, in this story, the children of Israel are stuck between a proverbial and literal rock in the hard place. They are facing the Red Sea in the midst of mountainous territory and boxed in by the rapidly approaching army of the Egyptian people. They are not equipped to fight, were too numerous to hide, and too weighed down the road. What could they do? It was an impossible situation. But let's back up for a minute. I know this is a familiar story for many, but it's a good one, one worth retelling. The book of Exodus begins with a new pharaoh, one who doesn't know of Joseph or his contributions to survival of all Joseph, his brothers, and the entire generation have expired, and the bear and this Pharaoh is fearful of the children of Israel gaining power. His plan is simple. Old pressure. Let's work so hard and so long that they all die. Sounds familiar, huh? Mm -hmm. But just as in this story, we come from a resilient people. I can imagine our great, 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 great forbearance performing that breaking labor. For cruel and wicked taskmasters, masters, even to be in the arms of a loved one back in the shack. It's crazy to me that folks don't realize that the more you oppress them, the more you oppress me, the more trouble you bring to me, the more I'll turn to the ones who love me. If I'm married, that's my spouse. So of course we're going to be fruitful and multiply. I find strength and encouragement support in the arms of those who love me. When the outside world is beating you down, our homes are our sanctuary. Oppression doesn't weaken us. It drives us to unify. And in our history, just like in the history of this people, the population flourished. No matter how hard the tasks were, the people multiply and impart the situation. It doesn't stop there. The 
Pharaoh decided, well, since they won't die from the labor, we'll just kill them. He literally called in the midwives to ordain the test to kill all the male babies in the home. I guess he said to himself, I can't start to reproduce them, but I can't cut down the lives of the young ones. I can wipe out the next generation. I won't speculate. More sickness than 
health, more loneliness than companionship, more defeat than victories, more loss than suffering, uh, more loss than suffering than attainment and fulfillment. For all things be unto our Almighty God, who is the author, the creator, and the remedy of every impossible Let's back up a minute. Exodus 13, 17, 18, the New Living Translation reads this way. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philippine territory. Even though that was a shortest route to the promised land, God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. The Lord put the children of Israel in this impossible situation. I know that's hard to understand. We don't want to wrap our minds around it, but that's the absolute truth. The Lord put the children of Israel in this impossible situation. If we go back to our original text in verse 1, it says, Then the Lord gave the instructions to Moses, or the Israelites to turn back and camp by Pahahiro between Migdal and the sea, camp there along the shore, across from Baal Zephon. God told Moses to lead the people back to camp between the mountains and the sea. But why? Because God was orchestrating an impossible situation. The Egyptians were a real people of an established culture. If he had allowed them to go back to go back to the country, these were fighting people. They weren't weak or weak at all. Since they had taken the direct route straight through Philistine territory, first of all, we talk about 600 men, not counting the women and children. If you saw a herd of people walking through your property, walking through your property, what would you think? This is how we go back to the way I 
can not hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day, darker than light are the same to you. No matter how impossible the situation, we serve a God who is a master of impossible situations. Prayer service. If you just need prayer because you feel like you're in a 
situation that seems impossible because things are just piling up one after another. If it ain't one thing, it's another. You feel like your belt when you got bad news after bad news. But I just want to tell you that Joe wound up on top and not the bottom because he was meant to be the head and not the tail. And he was meant to be on top and not the bottom. If you're here in the parking lot and you're facing what you believe, it's an insurmountable situation. I just want you to hold your horn so I can know that we need to pray. If you need a Scott specializes in things that seem impossible situation, you need prayer. Just hold your horn one time. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we come to do what we should have already done. So many of us are facing things that seem impossible. So many of us are waking up with the odds stacked against us. But I come to tell you, God, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I came to be your mouthpiece this morning, God. I came to be your trumpet. I came to be your declarer. I came to be your whistleblower, God, to let somebody know that they don't have a situation that you cannot turn around. I came, God, to testify and be a testament to what Reverend McNair has already told us. It looked impossible. It seemed impossible. But with God on our side, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. I pray, God, now throughout the viewing and the listening land and those in the park and praise service, every person that is in a situation that seems impossible will by faith in their own vision, God, in a spiritual moment, might walk out now to that river of their life that seems impossible and might speak into the atmosphere and declare and speak what has not yet to come as though it was already here and speak to those rivers that seem uncrossable and say to the river, river, you've been hindering me, river, you've been in my pathway. On the other side of you is my breakthrough. And I came today to tell you that my God specializes in things that seem impossible. I'm about to walk cross. I won't have to swim cross. Because just like in the text, God is about to part the waters that trouble me. God is about to part the waters that have been in my way. And I'm going to walk through them dry land. And when I get to the other side, it's going to be a Holy Ghost party. But God, before you open the way to let me walk through, I just want to give you a praise now. Can I praise you, God, because you sustained me till I came to this moment in my life when I realized that I can walk through this situation. I just want to praise you, God, on this side before I get to the other side because the Spirit of God just resonated and shook my foundation to let me know it's been you who upheld me. If you were not already there, I would have already swunk away. The situation would already have taken me away. Now, now come on for just a few moments. If you can't imagine that you are on the other side of whatever that is, put your hands together and worship, glorify, magnify, and exalt the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 